to our video. Today we're going to be talking about the different structures of the brain, particularly the cerebrum. Looking at the cerebrum, we can see that it is made of six different lobes. These are the frontal, parietal, occipital, temporal, central and limbic lobes. The frontal, parietal, temporal and occipital lobes can be seen easily because they are located in the cortex, whereas the central and limbic lobes are located in the deep nuclei of the brain. The cerebral hemispheres have gyri and sulci and are connected by the corpus callosum, which is a band of nerve fibres. Aphasia is a disorder which affects a person's communication, particularly their reading and writing. It normally results from a stroke or head injury. Broca's aphasia, otherwise known as expressive aphasia, is a condition which results from damage to the left frontal lobe. Broca's aphasia causes impairment to speech, particularly in grammar and word structure. The person's comprehension of the language is good, but they can't find the words to express themselves. Wernicke's aphasia results from damage to the posterior temporal lobe. The Wernicke's area is responsible for grammar. Therefore, sufferers of this disorder speak fluently, but their words are inappropriate and they fail to comprehend the language. The limbic system in the cerebrum is to do with memory and emotions. The hippocampus is associated with memory. The amygdala is associated with emotion. The thalamus, which we can see on the diagram on the right, relays sensory signals to the cerebral cortex and the hypothalamus is a control centre of the brain which regulates homeostasis in the body. The limbic system is also responsible for articulate formation. The basal ganglia is found deep within the hemispheres. It consists of five structures. These are the chordate and putamen, which form the striatum. The substantia nigra makes the mesencephalon. Other structures are the globus pallidus and the subthalamic nucleus. The basal ganglia controls movement. Therefore, if there are problems with the basal ganglia, it can lead to neurodegenerative diseases. An example is Parkinson's disease. Parkinson's disease is an example of a neurodegenerative disease caused by loss of nerve cells in the substantia nigra. These nerve cells are responsible for producing dopamine, therefore there is a loss of dopamine in this area. In this disease, the substantia nigra cannot function normally, which causes slow and abnormal movements. Direct and indirect pathways are involved in making movements difficult for Parkinson's disease sufferers. The indirect pathway leads to increased activity of dopamine, whereas the direct pathway leads to decreased activity of dopamine, which is seen in Parkinson's. And a fun fact is that Parkinson's disease is the first disease to be associated with a deficiency of a single neurotransmitter. Today we've covered the six different lobes of the brain and how damage of these lobes can lead to disorders such as aphasia. We've covered the basal ganglia and how damage to the substantial nigra can inhibit dopamine levels and lead to Parkinson's disease. We've also covered the indirect and direct pathways of dopamine in the basal ganglia. Thanks for watching.